Early hockey pucks were made of wood. But for informal games, a stone or a piece of frozen animal dung would suffice. Eventually, rubber became the material of choice. The modern puck is 7.5 cm in diameter and 2.5 cm deep. Smashing. 11 different ingredients go into making these hockey pucks. The recipe begins with natural rubber. Two types of oil make the rubber durable. Certain minerals act as curing and anti-aging agents. And a form of coal dust called carbon black serves as a filler. The ingredients are fed into a preliminary mixer. First, the slabs of natural rubber. Then antioxidants to lengthen the rubber's lifespan. Then one type of oil to help blend in the dry chemicals. Then another type to refine the rubber's rigidity level. Then additives such as calcium carbonate and sulphur to help cure the rubber during the moulding process. And finally, the carbon black filler. After 10 to 15 minutes of this preliminary blending, the mixture goes down a chute and onto a conveyor belt, which transports it to a machine called the mill mixer, which will perform the final mix. At this point, more natural rubber is added. Then another harder rubber that will make the hockey pucks more resilient is added. The recipe is formulated to produce a very tough rubber, one that can stand up to the rigours of repeated blows from a hockey stick. It's critical that the ingredients blend evenly. That's why the rubber is continuously cut while it's mixing. In the company lab, technicians evaluate a sample from each batch. This device is called a rheometer. It analyzes what's called the curing curve, how the rubber hardens and to what degree. A computer compares the curing curve to the quality model. If they match, the batch gets the go-ahead. The rubber hasn't yet gone through the curing process, so it's still malleable. An extruder squeezes it through a round die. This produces logs about a metre long and seven and a half centimetres wide, the exact diameter of the hockey puck. The next machine slices each log into 39 pieces. Each piece is 2.8 centimetres thick. These pieces are called preforms because at this stage they're not quite fully formed pucks. Workers put them into compression moulds. Each mould cavity is the exact size of the finished hockey puck. cover goes on, then the moulds go into a curing press, which compresses the preforms and heats them to 149 degrees Celsius. It takes about 18 minutes for the rubber to cure. The preforms come out as hockey pucks, rock hard and 3 millimetres thinner than before. They cool for 24 hours. During the compression phase, excess rubber oozed out and stuck to the pucks, so each and every puck is run manually through a trimming machine. There's excess rubber stuck to the moulds as well. The factory scrapes it off, grinds it up and uses it as a filler in subsequent batches. The mould embedded a dimple pattern on the puck's edge. This texture creates friction between the puck and the hockey stick. The more friction, the better stick control, and the greater the hockey puck's net worth. <laughs>